let's um, talk a little bit about geography now in Europe, because I know both Caprite and Granite have um, significant exposure in the European market. I met last week with the CFO of Seagro, you know, largest UK REIT, uh, maybe the largest in uh, Europe in the industrial space, been around for 100 years, and we talked about some of the challenges they're having in the European market. Kevin, what are you seeing there on the industrial side? Because we know Europe is arguably um, probably a little worse off than North America is. Certainly that's the view of most investors. Uh, energy costs are higher. What do you see in terms of activity? Well, we're not as active on the development. We have one development property in Germany and we had a few renewals that we dealt with in the quarter that went very well. And our development site in Germany, we have 200,000 feet remaining and we have three prospects on that. And I will tell you that I think we're down to two and we're projecting a rent that's probably 10% above what we were in the second quarter. So all I would say to that is, I don't wanna, I don't wanna seem glib. I, I think fundamentals remain very strong. And I, I saw a report out of the Financial Times that basically said, it looks like the fundamentals in Germany and Western Europe continue to be very strong and improve and improve. That's not what they were saying in the second quarter. And I think they've been surprised at the, you know, how robust the leasing has been. So that's what we're seeing. And I think what I would account for that more than anything is this sort of just in time supply chain uh, philosophy to just in case. And I'm, I'm, for sure I'm paraphrasing somebody that said that many times. But the point being, tenants that are in storage and distribution have been impacted heavily by supply chain disruptions for the past two and a half years. And they are building more storage capacity. They're building sort of perseverance into their supply chains, resilience into their supply chains, and that's what we're seeing. So we have, um, you know, what we're seeing out there in the market is stronger fundamentals than we were in the second quarter so far. And I know it could be subject to changes in the future, but we're, the market seems to be in a very strong position so far. It's encouraging. Mark, what about you? Well, Europe is performing exceptionally well for us. You know, the, uh, the Dutch market, Netherlands, we're seeing it's the highest performing uh, portion of our business. You know, we're 80% margins there. Utilities are all passed through. Um, things are great. The, we have um, completely hedged our, our uh, asset uh, debt exposure. We're 100% levered in Europe. Um, we have instruments in place. Yeah, so we have no uh, foreign exchange risk on the investment, but we have erosion on the returning income. <laughs> so despite all the growth, you can't, beat, you can't make up for a euro that's lost 30% of, uh, of its kick. So when the euro was stable, we could find much bigger yield spread than we can find in Canada, and the story seemed to, to make a lot of sense. Today, it, you know, it's a, it's a puzzle because the performance is excellent. Demand is still there. Demand is still there. The business is performing, performing exceptionally well, and yet we're getting, we're getting uh, kicked over there as well. One important thing that I cannot say enough about our European investment that's fundamentally different than Canada is that when we look at those NAVs and those IFRS values, it absolutely doesn't tell the investor that we can sell apartments one at a time. They're all condos. The entire portfolio is a condo portfolio. So when people talk about regulatory risk and impacts to valuation, I say, well, there's no regulation on a sale. Right. And the liquidity uh, uh, exit plan for the European investment is completely different than Canada. We can have an interest rate environment, a regulatory environment that pushes down values in Canada, in Europe, if they change regulation, we sell units one at a time in vacant possession at, at significant premiums to, to NAV calculation. So, so that is, I think, entirely underappreciated. I think it's a private equity play more than it's a REIT play in today's environment. I think what investors are telling us is, you know, you should, if you're gonna, when times are good, Mark, you can do these little experiments and, and, and get and benefit uh, and explore, but, but there seems to be a drive for pure play that we're listening to as well. Um, we're not, there's no strategic plan reveal, but these are the pressures that I get sort of every day from investors. And I think I had mentioned to you, uh, this to you before, but one thing I thought was interesting in discussions with investors is um, the vast majority of our leases in Europe are CPI index or tied to the CPI index, and, and most of them are, are annual. 
and there has been a concern, will we be able to capture, like, does the tenant have the ability to pay eight, nine percent more next year when they're facing higher energy costs? And I have to remind investors, uh, number one, the majority of our tenants don't have energy intensive uh, activities. But number two, um, how does that compare to tenants that we have in the GTA that are facing 60% rent increases, right, 70% right. rent increases, and in the US, 20 to 30%, they don't seem that concerned about their ability to pay that increase in rent. So I think it's all relative. Um, and, it, and it's kind of headline driven. This is what they read about, right, Kevin? So as a result, this is what they impose on yeah, Granite or Capri. That. I appreciate that. Yeah. So hopefully sessions like this are really helping people better appreciate what's happening below the well, surface. I would say this too, and this is a subjective comment. And I, I don't know if Mark agrees with this or not, but, but I think there's a lot of consternation about Europe, which I, which I appreciate. But we speak to our team. Our, our entire team was down for an offsite in Dallas last week, including our European team. They don't have the same level of concern that we have at all. This consternation seems to be more acute here for Europe than it does with, with Europeans. Interesting.